Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Sabrina Baxter. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and I'm really excited to be on YouTube. Honestly, after my little fiasco with Instagram, if you don't know, I'm on Instagram, no such thing as TMI. I make very funny videos, if I do say so myself, all things vaginal health, pelvic health, hormone health, period health, all the things. Um, I got taken down a couple times. Instagram can't handle the pelvic floor content. And then I made a backup account, that got taken down, but they're both, they were both were reactivated on my golden birthday, okay? I turned 27 on the 27th of December, they were reactivated, we're good. But it is a New Year's resolution of mine, goal of mine, to be more active on YouTube because I don't trust Instagram. Plus, I like the longer videos, more in-depth, better explanations, and I want to give you more content that you can really truly understand, not just quick 15 second clips where our squirrel brains are like, because we're consuming so many different videos. So we're gonna go through vaginismus today and six things you can do at home to overcome vaginismus. Now, if you don't know what vaginismus is, it is, it's defined as involuntary pelvic floor muscle contractions. So if you're not familiar with what your pelvic floor is, it's the set of muscles on the bottom of your pelvis that connect from pubic symphysis all the way to your tailbone. They act as this hammock and they support your internal organs, uterus, bladder, bowel in women, bladder, bowel, prostate in men. So involuntary means that when something is going to insert, whether you're at the gyno for a pap smear, you're trying to insert a tampon, you're trying to insert a penis or maybe even a toy, your muscles kind of tense and it's hard for you to relax them. So that's under involuntary control. You're trying to relax, but you're having difficulty relaxing. So that's a condition we call vaginismus, usually results in painful penetration because when you're tightening, nothing can get in there. You know what I mean? I do want you to know that vaginismus is 100% curable. I know it seems like your sex life is over, you're never gonna have sex, you're never gonna be able to use a tampon or tolerate the gyno exam, but you will. You will be able to say those affirmations, girl. Watch this video, do these things at home, and trust me, in no time, stay consistent, be patient with yourself, stay positive, and in no time, you will be having pain-free penetration. So these are six different exercises that you can do at home that can help with your pelvic floor muscle relaxation and taking control of vaginismus. First one is pelvic floor breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. You can lay on your back with your legs straight or propped up on one to two pillows if you don't like to lay on your back. And now bring your attention to your breathing pattern. Are you more of a chest breather? Are you more of a belly breather? Are you not breathing? Because some people just totally forget to breathe and they hold their breath for a long time. So what I want you to do is lay on your back, place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly and take a nice big inhale in through your nose. I want you to send that breath to your belly. So your chest should be rising, your ribs are expanding and your belly is rising. Now when you exhale, exhale as if you're blowing out of a straw and watch your belly fall. This is diaphragmatic breathing. We love diaphragmatic breathing because when you take a nice big inhale into the belly, when you practice this kind of breathing, your pelvic floor muscles relax. This can be helpful when you're trying to insert something. You can really focus on that inhalation and that will help relax your pelvic floor muscles. I've seriously had patients where sometimes I'm like, next time you go to insert something, just take a nice big inhale and see how that helps. And it's really a game changer. One, because anatomically speaking, like I just said, it relaxes your pelvic floor. But two, because a lot of the times when we already are used to pain with inserting something, we tend to clench or tense and that further perpetuates the pain. So really focusing on breathing can help relax our muscles to tolerate penetration. The second exercise is called a pelvic floor drop. If you have vaginismus, you may notice that you clench your pelvic floor, you tighten your abdomen, or you're just clenching in general. We really want to try to relax your muscles. I try to encourage people to check in on themselves throughout the day, just, you know, maybe every hour, put a reminder on your phone, am I clenching? Whether that's my jaw and my or my shoulders hiked up, it's my belly tucked in, you know, what does my posture look like? Can I try to relax? 
A pelvic floor drop is more specific to your pelvic floor. It's like doing a Kegel or a pelvic floor contraction, but focusing on the relaxation part. So I like to use the cue to hold in a fart. If you try to hold in a fart without squeezing your butt cheeks, hold in a fart, you may feel a lift of your pelvic floor and then let that let that fart go let those muscles go that's the drop that's the pelvic floor drop the pelvic floor muscle relaxation that we want to be focusing on so if you can do that you know during the day every hour or so that can kind of be a cue to you bring more body awareness to relax your pelvic floor the next four exercises are stretches so these stretches target your hips, they target your back, they target your pelvic floor too. So a lot of the times people with vaginismus also have very tight hips, they have very tight abdominals, very tight low backs, and all these muscles attach onto your pelvis. So it's really important that these muscles are also relaxed so that we can relax your pelvic floor, so that your pelvis has more mobility, those pelvic floor muscles have more room to breathe, more room to move, are getting those nutrients of oxygen and blood. This stretch is the piriformis stretch. It's also called the figure four stretch. You can either lay on your back with both your knees bent and cross one leg over and pull that, that knee towards your opposite shoulder, or you can sit up and do this. You can hold this stretch for three times, 30 to sec 60 seconds, whatever feels right for you, but at least 30 seconds. The next stretch is child's pose. I'm sure you've seen this pose before. It is a great stretch for your low back and it's a great stretch to facilitate diaphragmatic breathing because in this position, gravity is going to be trying to pull your belly down. So when you inhale, you'll feel your belly go towards the ground and when you exhale, it will just naturally rise. So you're kind of further promoting that kind of pelvic floor relaxation with breathing and getting a nice low back stretch and you may feel it in your hips as well. You can either do this with your knees together, you'll feel it more on your back if you do that, or you can do it with your toes touching knees wide and you'll feel it a little bit more in your hips. The fifth stretch is happy baby. You can start this by laying on your back, draw both your knees towards your chest and then reach for your big toes. Then you can gently extend your knees and press your feet towards the sky if you have any tightness in your hips and hamstrings, you can use a towel or a yoga strap, or you can bend your knees to help kind of extend that reach. But you can hold this position and breathe deeply to help the pelvic floor relax for roughly one to two, two to three minutes. And the last exercise is a deep squat. So you can start standing near some kind of stable object just to help with balance. You can use a kitchen counter, a couch, a wall, Hold onto the counter for balance and then press your hips backwards and sink into a deep squat. Breathe deeply into your belly and your rib cage. And again, when you're taking those big inhales, imagine your pelvic floor muscles relaxing. Hold this position for one to two minutes. I hope you find those stretches helpful. Just remember that vaginismus really needs to take a full body approach. It's not just the pelvic floor that's causing problems. It's mind, body, spirit if you are tense if you're stressed if you're anxious really try to check in with yourself breath work is super important prioritizing diaphragmatic breathing prioritizing those body checks bringing more awareness to your pelvic floor those pelvic drops that we talked about and then really prioritizing a stretching and mobility routine with the exercises that i listed prior so i hope you really like those and i hope you found this video useful if you did please subscribe um your girl's new to youtube and she needs some motivation to keep making videos you know what i mean because this is quite difficult to record and edit and not to critique myself when i film so if you have any questions though please leave some comments i will respond to those as soon as i can and plus i think it's helpful to leave questions because if you have a question someone else probably has a question too and if i didn't explain something well enough then i'm happy to clarify or explain it better in another video so hope you have a great rest of your day and definitely check out my video on how to use dilators because dilators are very helpful for vaginismus as well